I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, all right. No, stop, hold it, I'm here, I'm not late. I'm back, let's go, let's do another thing, here we go. Uh, uh, welcome back to the eternal 70s animation month. I refuse to move on from this topic without talking about some animated movies from the 70s that were not made in the United States. So I brute forced my way through Fantastic Planet, the experimental French adult animation classic, just to make a video for you. I respect this movie a lot, but whether or not I actually like it is something I'll get to later. Is that how I did these videos? Is this how I... Released in 1973, one year after Fritz the Cat, incidentally, Fantastic Planet is a French and Czech co-production based on a French novel. It won the special jury prize at Cannes Film Festival that year, and it is generally very positively regarded among critics, both, you know, when it released originally and also here in the modern day. It gets very good reviews. And yes, it is generally considered to be a classic, not just of animation, but also just filmmaking in general. And if you see any, like, stills or, or clips from this movie, that's very easy to believe because Fantastic Planet's best quality by far is its visuals. And even more specifically, its art direction is pretty great. The detailed shading featuring lots of, of hatch and crosshatch shading looks wonderful. It brings a depth to the images that just wasn't all that common in animation of the time period. Even today, heavily shaded traditional animation is difficult and extremely time consuming and so it remains uncommon. The design aspects of this world, why am I wearing my headphones? The design aspects of this world from its landscapes to its flora and fauna to its weapons and gadgetry are really compelling. And when you watch a trailer for this movie, you get the impression that the movie is just stuffed to the brim with these kinds of neat designs. But actually, no. <laughs> It's not. For example, uh, the random creatures in this movie are probably my favorite thing about Fantastic Planet. But in total, there are maybe six or seven of them. For the majority of this movie, we are spending time with kind of ugly looking humans and admittedly distinctive and iconic blue alien people. These are the least compelling elements of this fantastical sci-fi world to me, so as a result, I get tired of this movie's look very quickly. And that visual fatigue is exacerbated by the movie's animation. So one of the reasons that this kind of like high detail, heavily shaded animation is so rarely done is that it takes more time to create individual frames. And when it takes a really long time to draw each individual frame, you have to extend the timeline, the production timeline of the entire movie and spend a huge amount of money to get it all done, or you have to cut back in other areas. So in this case, they decided to cut back on the animation portion of this animated movie. And by that, I mean that the movement of Fantastic Planet, like character movement, uh, character facial expressions, action sequences, all of these elements of the movie are what I would call almost laughably bad, or, or, or they even come across as cheap. But that feels so harsh because, again, this isn't for lack of ability on the part of the animation team. This is something that is necessitated by the art direction. So flashy, detailed, really fluid movement just wasn't feasible. And while I understand that reasoning, I still feel just as disappointed in this movie's animation because for me, honestly, I think most of the time movement conveyed through animation is more interesting to me. That's what I care about more than character designs. Obviously character designs and world designs and backgrounds are really interesting and fantastic too. But my preference happens to be with movement, <laughs> with changes, transitions, all that stuff. So when I'm combing through footage of the movie or, or looking at stills, it's wonderful. Like I would love 
a poster of, of some of these frames from the movie. I would use them as my desktop wallpaper, that kind of thing. But in action, in living color, Fantastic Planet is a letdown. Now, I promise this will be a pretty short video because I am about to cover the movie's narrative, pacing, music, and overall execution all at once. It's boring. <laughs> I'm gonna try to substantiate that because it's not, it's not great to, you know, a lot of people do that on the internet, just say something's boring and they move on. This is a boring movie that felt at least twice its length while I was watching it. And by the way, this is probably like the fourth or the fifth time that I have tried to watch through the entire movie. I have started it many other times through the years and never once have I been able to actually finish it. It was only earlier today that I actually finished the movie for the first time, specifically because I knew I had to make this video. Now, if you have seen my video on the topic of boring movies, or, or more accurately, slow movies, I know, I know <laughs> that you are ready and willing to roast me for saying that this is a boring movie. And that's fine, because to sum up, in, in that other video, I tried to make a case for the value of movies that have incredibly slow pacing. And for me, that value comes from the unique movie watching experience that only a slow movie can provide, where you kind of get hypnotized by stunning visuals and long sultry lulls in the action and, and, and beautiful acting. You start to notice more of the nuances, you react to smaller details, etc. Despite all of that, boring movies still exist. There are movies out there that do not benefit from slow pacing, that are just plain boring and hard to watch because they do not offer anything of interest to the viewer. Totally subjective. I might think a movie is boring. You might think it's, you know, slow and beautifully done. A-okay. But regardless, I think we all have movies that we just consider to be boring. I respect that. <laughs> and for me, Fantastic Planet is a painfully boring movie. I would even argue that the pacing here is not all that slow. I don't think it qualifies as a slow movie at all. The total runtime is like an hour and 15 minutes. It's, it's barely a feature film by a lot of standards. And in that time, quite a lot of stuff happens. Like it moves along in theory at a decent rate, but somehow, despite how the plot points might sound on paper, none of them are executed in an interesting way. And so they're not that interesting to watch. So for example, there's a scene where our lead character, who is, it's very easy to forget he's the lead character. Anyway, so this character and some rando guy are forced to fight each other by strapping combat animals to their chests <laughs> with ropes. And they have their arms tied behind their backs and then these, these animals fight each other and try to kill the other person as well. Sounds pretty darn cool. Like, that's stupid and it's weird and exciting. Cool idea. Except in reality, it's not any of those things. Somehow they managed to make this dull. <laughs> they made little dinosaurs fighting to the death on behalf of their human captors boring. That's like a scientific anomaly. And that extends to so many different aspects of this movie, which is why I won't be talking about every aspect in detail, because I would be saying the same thing about pretty much all of them. The music is, is vague psychedelia with heavy influence from Pink Floyd. I remember none of the compositions in particular. It all just blends together. The characters' facial expressions communicate total disinterest. The eyes especially just look dead. <laughs> Animators and animation fans as well, they all know that a character's eyes and mouth are extremely valuable tools for conveying character emotion. They can convey any emotion that you can think of. Shock, joy, sorrow, embarrassment, whatever. In Fantastic Planet, they successfully convey, I guess, an affinity for recreational tranquilizer use. I should briefly explain the story. So there are big, giant blue aliens who see tiny humans as pets or like even pests. So the alien children play with them and they sometimes abuse them, making them fight each other and things like that. Uh, they dress the little humans in goofy outfits. Eventually, our lead character human 
gains alien knowledge by accident, basically, and decides to rebel, fleeing his owners and accidentally, <laughs> by pure chance, he finds some wild humans who live independently in the wilderness away from the aliens. Now from there, they experience conflict with other wild humans and they try to evade alien capture and extermination. That's a lot of the movie. So it's a very basic, allegorically fertile storyline. It's, it's one group of beings oppressing another group of beings based on the belief that they are inferior and potentially dangerous. Sure, you know, it's, it's an extremely common setup that we've seen many times both in and out of sci-fi. It's a kind of eternal story about power disparity. And I'm on board with that, but I'm also not impressed by it. Apparently other critics act like they're being clever when pointing out that the movie's central allegory can be applied to things like apartheid, uh, civil rights, animal rights, or, or the Holocaust. And yeah, like, like yes. <laughs> Apparently they're getting paid to share these incredible gems of analysis. <laughs> On the surface level, I get no enjoyment from Fantastic Planet. And on the level of analysis and appreciation, I, I don't, yeah, no. But I don't want to end this on a purely negative note. So I'm going to recommend some alternative movies that actually deliver the qualities that other people seem to see and get from Fantastic Planet. So if you want some animated sci-fi with a bunch of weird creatures that ultimately touches on profound subject matter, you can go ahead and watch the short film The Meaning of Life from Don Hertzfeldt. Very short, very easy to get through. I think it's even just on YouTube. You could also watch Wizards from the director of Fritz the Cat. I mean, Wizards is better than this. Wizards is not a good movie. Pretty much anything from Felix Colgrave. He mostly does shorts, but, uh, and, and in fact, some of his work feels directly influenced by Fantastic Planet in terms of art direction, but the execution is so much more compelling. And if you want a French animated film with high detail art direction that includes movement rather than awkward twitching and sex doll facial expressions, watch The Triplets of Belleville. It's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful movie that manages to have both. And I think we're done. I'll be releasing another video as soon as I can. Scheduling is, is tough right now, but I will get to it, I promise. But that's all for now. Thanks for stopping by.